Hey everyone, my name is Sam. And I'm Angela, and we're Greenacre Homestead. Welcome back to the beginning of a new project. So what is our new big project? Our new big project is one that we've been talking about ever since, well, before we moved here. But it seems like every year that we do gardening out here on our homestead, we've talked about, boy, wouldn't it be nice to do this? And we just never got around to it. Well, finally, on I think year number five, we are finally getting around to it. And that is... A greenhouse. A greenhouse. <laughs> so why are we finally getting around to doing a greenhouse? It's a really good question. It's probably something maybe some of you are also wondering, especially in light of one of our latest videos where I was in my office, kind of the, the raw vlog, talk to the camera thing, and I said that I didn't want to spend our money on the deck. Well, this project, spending the money for this project, is something that will pay us back year after year. And hopefully we will be able to do gardening, food production year round. So in that sense, it's justifiable. So we did look at some of the prefab options that you can buy online, um, stuff from Harbor Freight, some of the ones that you can get off Amazon or from Lowe's, Home Depot. Yep, hoop houses too, caterpillar tunnels. I think we've researched for a good, what, week solid at least. Mm -hmm. Pinterest. And we've looked in the past as well. Pinteresting to the max. <laughs> That's how you do research. So after doing that, we come to the conclusion that we didn't think that the Harbor Freight ones would be sturdy enough for what we need. And up on our hill where it does get high winds and it's in the sun all day from start to finish. <laughs> yeah. And so we didn't think it would hold up. And anything that wasn't Harbor Freight was like really expensive. And when we know we can build it ourselves. We didn't want to have to put out the money for it. Right. The things that were more in our budget were too small. Commercially available mm -hmm. ones that were in our budget were way too small. We are going to build one that is 12 feet wide, 16 feet long, 8 foot sidewalls, and about a 12 foot peak. Wow. We're going big because we're home. Go big or go home. Well, you're already home, so you might <laughs> as well go big. So as far as the style, I really like, well, he does too. <laughs> But you know, it's what I really want. <laughs> yeah. Biltmore Estate. If you guys have seen the Biltmore Estate, that's what she wants. That's what she really likes. Uh, mm -hmm. Victorian. <laughs> I like it too. Is a wooden frame and a gable style, you know, with the peak, peak roof. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and that is not usually what he builds. He likes the shed roof, which is just the one slant yep. roof. And I like that because it's easy to build. It's cheaper on materials and it's just easier to do. <laughs> but in this instance, we'll go with something prettier because it's not gonna be that much more expensive on materials. So if you watched our garden videos from last year, this is pretty much the entrance to the garden. We did take down the fence on the outside and we've already taken out two of the beds because this is actually where the greenhouse is going. So the reason we chose this area is it gets the most sun. We were going to do it on the outside of our garden so we didn't have to remove anything except for the strawberry beds. But there are some trees right here that shade it too much during the day, so half of the greenhouse would be in the shade, which kind of defeats the purpose. So we decided to move it this way a little bit, and it has no trees all the way around it, enough that it's gonna get full sun all day, which is what it needs. The first step in this project is digging and setting posts in the ground. But for that, we're going to use our new tool. That's 
totally you right there. Uh -huh. Say oh, what? Look. You want to read it? It comes with two sack of oil. Sweet. Nice. You got some extra. Knock you out here, hun. I know. What we have here is an earthquake name brand one person gas powered auger. Right out of the box, this looks like it should be very easy to assemble because you only have three parts you've got the engine auger head assembly, you've got the auger bit, and then you've got this. I think it's a hole starter. I forget what they call it, maybe fishtail, but this goes on the end of the auger. So, kudos to Earthquake for making this easy to install and assemble. It's also pretty lightweight. I mean, this might be maybe 35 pounds. It's not as heavy as Isaac, so, <laughs> you know, you relate it to how heavy your kids are, I guess. All right, I'm gonna set this over here on the seat. So I don't want to bust up the plastic with the four-wheeler rack. Stay. Stay. So we've got a single bolt here with a lock nut. Okay, so I want to be a good example. Before I start, let me actually look at the instruction manual and make sure that there's no weird steps that I don't realize. So this thing has one page of instructions, six steps total. That's my kind of assembly. Basically, you put this together on the engine, put the bolt through, and then you attach the fishtail assembly on the bottom of the auger. I'm gonna go ahead and double check all of these factory fasteners to make sure they're good. That's good. That's good. To the end. Yep. And here is the fishtail. It just threads right into the bottom of the auger. That's nice. That way you don't lose your gas cap. As far as two cycle engines go, this looks like it has a huge gas tank, which is awesome. You don't want to run out of gas while you're just digging up the world. This is a 43cc engine. So there you go. <laughs> Smaller than a, a liquor sickle, I guess, or a scooter. <laughs> All right, it is filled up with fuel. Now I'm gonna press the primer bulb here about five or six times until it fills up. I'm kind of getting close. All right, there we go. I did it 10 times, however long it takes. I want to turn the switch here on the side to on. Then move the lever down to choke all the way down. And Pull it until it turns over. All right, it's running. Put it halfway on the lever. Just let it warm up for a minute. I'm going to let it run for a little while since this is the first time it's been started. That way the oil and gas mixture can kind of get through the system and kind of gets warmed up a little bit and to mate the pistons to the cylinders type thing. So, see you guys in a little bit. First thing to do is to lay out our lines with string and wooden stakes. 
to mark the perimeter and get a square foundation for our greenhouse. What I'm doing first is the easiest one, which is this long run that's gonna parallel the existing garden bed over here to the left. It's gonna be exactly three feet off from that. I've already driven a stake down there with the string attached to it at three feet. I'm coming down here beyond where the greenhouse is gonna be, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, wrap a string around this stake, and have Angela measure off that corner of the bed there to where it's three feet, and then I'll drive it in the ground. We have our long string done. Next thing we're going to do is this little run here. We're gonna space the greenhouse two feet off from this garden bed to give us enough of a walkway, but not waste space up here in the garden. So I'm gonna measure from this planter bed over two feet and put a mark on the string with this marker. Now I'm gonna take the string, wrap it around the stake, put it about here and run it out that way. All right, what I've done here is made a little H brace. This is gonna allow us to move this string as we need to, to give us a 90 degree corner down there at the end. Keep on. All right, You're exactly there. All right, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Yay. There you go. This is definitely a three person job. I don't know how you do it by yourself. That's the hardest part. It is. I've always struggled with string layouts and foundation markings and I hate it. I don't know if there's an easier way to do it with just a couple of people, but it took both of us measuring with a three, four, five method to get the line square and Elijah moving it. So I don't know, maybe there's an easier way. If there is, I didn't come up with it with hey, the tools and stuff we had on hand, so. With all of the projects that we've built, this has been the easiest to end the <laughs> measuring. You don't ever say that. We've only started. That's it. We're jinxed. No, with the measuring. We are totally jinxed. Our method for squaring up the corners was what's called a 3-4-5 method. It's where you measure on one string, three feet, put a mark, measure out the other string, four feet, put a mark, and then you measure those two marks, and it should be five feet. That's how you get them square. The perimeter string is done. Now we need to go through and measure and mark for each of our post holes location to then drill them out with the auger. I am so glad we have this auger because I would hate to have to dig as many holes as we're about to drill by hand. Yay. We've done it in the past. We've, we've oh, done a lot of post hole yeah. digging. So, you know, we're not total wimps. We're just gonna do the better method this time. <laughs> yep, yep. And for those, okay, so here's another, here's a disclaimer. For those wondering why we bought an auger for a greenhouse, when we previously said we weren't going to spend a lot of money, we actually had this for a while. We were, got this in preparation to do in the deck. Since the deck is not going to happen right now, and we already had it, we figured why not use it here? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Can't let it rust away in the box. That's right. <laughs> Hopefully it wouldn't rust in the box. Well, yeah, but. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and put marks on our strings for, I think, 20 posts. I think's what I got in my head. Every four foot spacing. Kay. So we'll go ahead and mark it and get digging. All right, muscle has arrived in the form of Angela's brother. And uh, we've got all of our marks on our lines. There's a total of 18 posts going to the ground, which sounds ludicrous. But I build ludicrously. Um, it'll make sense. Beefing. Beefing, Angela says, from way back there. All right, let's go ahead and fire up the auger and put some holes in the earth. That, that took makes, under three minutes. That makes quick work. It's not super easy to hold on to. It does use some muscle, but a lot easier than digging it by hand for sure. Ho show.
this is nice well worth the money investment and this really wasn't even that cheap or that expensive <laughs> this really wasn't even that cheap no, this really wasn't that expensive and well worth it probably not if you're only doing one project like this but knowing that we're going to do this plus we got some retaining walls a deck someday well worth it We are done, and that is largely and thanks to you. Thank yes, you. thank you, Austin. Definitely. I told him earlier that if it was just me and Angela, one, we would have been fighting a lot sooner, probably. Yes, we do argue. We just usually don't put it on camera. And two, we probably got it halfway, and I would say, that's it. I'm done. I don't care. Just cover up the concrete. The goal was to get all this done today because it's going to be raining tomorrow. So, yeah. Again, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> Well, how did you like the auger? Oh, the auger was great. That was probably the most fun of this whole project. <laughs> doing the, the new tool. <laughs> yeah, doing the lines wasn't fun. Uh, doing the concrete was not fun at all. But the auger was a lot of fun. What do you think? I can't wait to rent a whack a packer over here. Ah, he says more tools, more power tools. <laughs> well, we appreciate you guys watching for part one of the greenhouse build. Stick around. This will be a multi-part series, um, but we hope to get this built in, let's say, the next week and a half, two weeks max. Awesome. So. Yes. Two weeks. Yeah. It should be done. Ah. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.